Good morning to you. Mark said with HurricaneTrack.com. It is 6.30 Eastern Time as I'm putting this together on Tuesday, October the 9th. Uh, I sound like I've got a cold because I guess I do, just a little bit of a throat irritation. It sounds worse than it is, so don't worry about me. Uh, the main thing is we got to talk about this. Hurricane Michael looking like it is getting better organized this morning and uh, probably well on its way to becoming a very strong hurricane over the northeast Gulf of Mexico, uh, more symmetrical in its appearance, and it's just a matter of time now, and I think it'll become a major hurricane, Category 3 or higher, and then make landfall up here sometime tomorrow, late tomorrow, maybe right at the evening time, somewhere in this vicinity with the eye, the center, but the effects will be felt all along this area and all along this area to some extent along the coast and of course inland from there some of those hurricane conditions probably spreading over into Tallahassee, Valdosta, Georgia and beyond. So the satellite presentation here this morning definitely telling us that Michael is getting better organized and the models are showing a steady intensification from here on out. So this is it. This is your last period of daylight coming up to prepare along these areas from uh, Homosassa Springs to Crystal River, Cedar Key, uh, all the way up through St. Mark's, uh, Port St. Joe, uh, Carabel, Panama City, Panama City Beach, Apalachicola, all of those areas along the coast, you need to be thinking, what do I need to do to, 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 to survive this, to make sure that I am not where this anywhere from 6 to 12 feet of water rise, storm surge inundation, is going to take place. As far as the peninsula goes, real quick, uh, some of these bands, <clears throat> depending on how they set up, the Florida Peninsula, yeah, you know, you could see uh, an occasional strong rain band come across this fairly uh, stout easterly flow coming off the Atlantic trying to pull what we call inflow to Michael's circulation it's doing everything it can to pull air into itself put it that way so as this approaches um, you know it's possible that you get some of these bands loosely related to Michael coming across areas uh, such as Orlando, Ocala, Gainesville, Lake City, and all the small towns and villages. Well, they, they call there is a place called the Villages. You, know, you think about 301 South, uh, I-4, that corridor, I-75. So just be on the lookout for that. Some of those bands might be able to produce a tornado, but those are going to be fairly isolated. All right, so let's take a look at the... Let's see, what was I going to show you? The main map here, this is interesting, just to give you a broader perspective. We do have Michael out here, of course. Leslie, which is going to still be around for a while. And a new tropical depression that has formed just southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Forecast to become tropical storm Nadine. But it will weaken and eventually dissipate over the far eastern tropical Atlantic in early October. This is rather unusual to see this kind of development this far east. Uh, pretty remarkable if you ask me. Luckily, it won't uh, be affecting land areas at all. But it's just a novelty, something I wanted to point out to you. All right, so key messages here just to re review this in case you haven't been keeping up with it. The main thing here is this life-threatening, uh, potentially catastrophic storm surge for parts of the northeast Florida coast, the Big Bend, the Nature Coast, and th this could really be bad, so please evacuate if you're told to do so. Uh, and even along the southeast coast of the United States, um, it's not specifically mentioned yet, but portions of the South Carolina and Georgia coasts with onshore flow as Michael goes by to your northwest you could have some storm surge along the low country of South Carolina, 
Savannah, Georgia, Brunswick, Georgia, up through maybe Myrtle Beach or something like that. Anywhere where there's onshore flow. So don't be surprised if you see some surge issues for portions of the Carolina coast as well. Um, you know, five bullet points here. So this is a big deal. Going to spread hurricane conditions inland for quite a ways. Tropical storm conditions up through the Carolinas and Georgia. So be ready. This is going to be a big ticket, major, disruptive, um, probably major hurricane landfall. Uh, looking at, I think this next one's the storm surge inundation. <clears throat> this is based on the advisory that came out at 5 a.m. Eastern Time, advisory number 11. And anything that you see here, I guess I'll draw with blue, um, all this area from Homosassa Springs over to Apalachicola and points west almost to Panama City, anywhere from three feet above ground level to nine feet or higher. So any of those red areas that you see are nine feet above ground level of inundation forecast. This is highly dependent on exactly where the center crosses the coast as it comes up like this, perhaps. This is just an example. Then everything on the right-hand side of that <clears throat> in that right front quadrant gets that onshore flow. And you just funnel the water up into the bay, the big bend. It's not called the big bend for nothing. And, you know, so areas like Cedar Key, uh, all the way up to St. Mark's, and areas with onshore flow, where the water is being pushed in from Michael into this funnel, concave shape bay, this is going to be a big problem. So if you are not planning to evacuate, then you could be really taking your life into your own hands uh, and, and have a frightening experience with storm surge, the likes of which you may have never seen. It, it could literally be catastrophic. So please take this very seriously. This is available, this graphic, on the home page of the National Hurricane Center under the Hurricane Michael uh, advisory products. All right? You just click right here, Storm Surge Inundation, and it is an interactive, zoomable map that shows you what they are projecting, the storm surge, these uh, what's called the slosh model, and that is a very advanced model to uh, for forecast inundation. I'm just showing you an example here. You can zoom in and you can pan around and get down to where you can start to see uh, city names, etc. It's not going to quite show you street level, but this does a great job. And anything there in that red and orange especially, um, you know, that's life-threatening, big-time storm surge problems. So please, please, please evacuate if you're told to do so. This is a very serious situation. I am going to be putting cameras with my team from Cedar Key, uh, which is down here under the logo, uh, St. Mark's, Carabel, uh, if I can find Carabel on here, <clears throat> Apalachicola, Alligator Point, I think Carabel is in here if I'm not mistaken, uh, Alligator Point's over here, and Apalachicola right over here. So we're going to have, oh, and then I'm thinking maybe even Mexico Beach, which is right about there. Um, so what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six cameras, uh, live cameras, okay? And if I'm putting cameras out, that means that I can't be there to see it myself. I mean, I can't be in six places at once anyway, but the cameras are for, in this situation, observing, streaming live, and researching later, uh, you observe first and research later, a lethal event that we just can't be there for. All right, so please, you know, man, if Mark's putting cameras out, that's probably not a good sign for me. Look at it that way. All right, I want to show you the uh, European real quick. This is the overnight run off the tropicaltidbits.com site, uh, the 0 Z run, and you can see the southeast United States here. Uh, the outline of the Carolinas, uh, there's Florida, all right, so get your bearings, <clears throat> trying to draw with the little touchpad, and then here is Michael, 
And what are we looking at? This is the uh, mean sea level pressure and the 850 millibar wind. So the wind at 5,000 feet, 5,000 feet, almost a mile up, the wind in the atmosphere. But what I want to show you is the progression of this over time. This is the initial conditions from 8 p.m. Eastern Time last night. This would be 8 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. All right, so Tuesday night at 0Z, and it's showing 965 millibars, okay? And a very stout wind field, and that wind, of course, moving towards the coast. This is 5,000-foot winds. The surface winds are going to be lighter, obviously, but not by much in some cases. We're looking at the possibility of Cat 3 wind damage as this rolls ashore. Then, uh, 24 hours later, it's on shore, and on this particular output, it shows 952 for the central pressure. A global model showing 952, but more importantly, look at the symmetry. And it's just things like this that I notice. Look at the symmetry of the wind field. It's not east side weighted. It's not oblong or weird looking. It's you know fairly symmetrical. And that worries me because that is the signature of a very healthy cyclone on the Earth. Okay, the rounder it is, the more intense what we call the conservation of angular momentum. That's a whole physics thing. It's really able to bundle that energy and become very powerful. And the landfall looks like real close to Panama City and vicinity. And that, uh, these winds again are 5,000 feet. But at the surface, the wind is just going to be funneled right up into this area, and that's going to create this terrible, terrible, potentially historic storm surge into the Big Bend area of Florida. 24 hours later, Thursday night, sitting over the lower Savannah River Valley, uh, pretty strong wind there coming across Charleston at the 5,000-foot level. And, you know, probably going to see some power outages. This is still possibly, possibly hurricane strength as it moves through South Carolina. That wouldn't surprise me. The pressure is certainly there. We'll just have to see how the lower wind field at the surface starts to calm down. But at 5,000 feet, you bet there's purples in there still indicating uh, hurricane conditions. And then 24 hours later, Friday night, it's offshore. Still fairly strong, strengthening again over the warm Gulf Stream. And so you folks all up through this region here, get ready. As I keep saying, this is your hurricane too. And it's going to be you know, knocking out power, trees down, travel along I-95, you name it. This is a serious, serious event. And I'm urging you to take this seriously all along the path. Be prepared. A lot of references that... This is not Florence, and that's referencing the rainfall, and I understand that. We don't want people getting upset and worried that we're going to have another flood event. All right, well, that's fine, but we do need to focus on the hazards that will be there, and this one's going to have some wind with it, okay? So what we're not going to have with the excessive rainfall in this area, again, we might make up for with wind. So please don't get caught off guard. Oh, oh, thank goodness, it's not going to be another Florence. That's the flooding aspect. Let's don't ignore what's coming, and that could be potentially hurricane-force wind gusts, and that's going to knock over trees that are still weak, almost knocked over from Florence, uh, whatever. So at the expense of other impacts, yes, it is good news that this is not going to stall and dump 20 inches of rain. That's obvious. But at the expense of ignoring the other impacts, please, this looks like, and I showed you the pressure there, it's almost going to remain hurricane intensity from a pressure standpoint. Therefore, any rain bands that form over your area could bring hurricane force winds in gusts all across this region. That wouldn't surprise me at all. And you just need to be ready for that. Schools need to be canceled. People need to stay off the road Work needs to be canceled for people. This is a serious, 
big time event coming up first for the Northeast Gulf and the Florida Panhandle, the Big Bend, as a coastal devastating landfall and then moving inland. And a lot of that inland activity tomorrow night, that's going to be at night. Okay? So South Georgia, etc. You know, some portion of the southeast is going to be dealing with a dying hurricane at night. And that is no fun at all. All right. <clears throat> so my plan, uh, I'll be working with uh, Brent and Carrie. And then we have uh, Derek, who has come down from South Dakota. Greg, coming down from Mississippi State. All of us working together in one fashion or another. Got each other's backs, helping each other out. We've got people in Tallahassee, folks that are supporters of what we're doing, some of our patrons, all hands on deck for this one, people really helping out. So the plan is, like I said, starting to set up cameras today, Cedar Key, um, St. Mark's, uh, Alligator Point, Carabel, Apalachicola, and Mexico Beach. Those are the areas that I want to put camera systems, live camera systems, and then we want to put our weather station over the bridge <clears throat> uh, near, it's one of, I think it's the Highway 98 bridge in Panama City. It's got a good structure that we can attach the mast to, and it's obviously elevated, and it could be some of the best wind data uh, that we've ever been able to record. All of that will feed into our app, first and foremost. That's why we developed this. It's called Hurricane Impact. Two words on the App Store. On Google Play, you may have to put it in quotes. You know, quote, hurricane, impact, end quote. I understand that it's kind of difficult to find. I will put a link to it in the description of this video on the Google Play Store. Um, this is what I provide. This is the, you know, I'm the only person in the world that does this, that sets up live cameras plus the weather stations ahead of a hurricane. Now, there's other people that set up wind instrumentation, universities, etc., but to make it available in an affordable, I mean, it's, it's $3.99, come on. Uh, wh where else can you find anything like that? So check on the App Store, Hurricane Impact, just like you see right there. It's pretty easy, two words. Google Play, you probably got to put a little bit more effort into finding it. I don't know why it's that way. It's annoying, uh, but again, I'll put a, just a link to it in the description. Um, for our patrons on Patreon, uh, I will be using the lens feature to post those 15-second video updates throughout the day. When we're, when we're done, there could be dozens of them, and that's a really cool feature. So if you want to join up on Patreon, that is a great way to support what we do. Not everything costs money, but this is what I do to help pay the bills. A lot of stuff we'll put on Hurricane Track, absolutely free, of course, on Twitter, and... Later today, we will be streaming live on the YouTube channel that you're watching this on, Hurricane Track. Um, I don't know exactly when, but we will be streaming live pretty much for the duration from that point on. So stay tuned for that. Again, <clears throat> I have a little bit of a scratchy throat. I feel fine. I got some rest last night, so don't let the sore throat sound throw you off. Oh, man, Mark, you sound terrible. Plus... You know, it's 6.50 in the morning, and it's kind of early for me. Um, I appreciate you tuning in, as always. we got a lot of work out ahead of us today. Uh, I'll have another update this evening. And, of course, once we're live, I can update you on the fly. And hopefully you'll tune in and just watch on your device of choice. That's the amazing thing about this. With YouTube Live, you can pretty much watch it on any Internet-connected device that has access to YouTube. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? All right, I'm done. I'm Mark Sedith, HurricaneTrack.com, in Gainesville, Florida, getting ready to go to work as we get ready for what's going to likely be a devastating landfall from Hurricane Michael. I'll have another update for you in this format uh, later this evening.